Good evening and namaskar everyone. I'm super excited to introduce my today's very amazing and special guest. His name is Varshan Sukhan. He is a South African public figure, celebrity, TV presenter, radio host, um, producer of Lotus FM South Africa and he is the one you see often with lots of Bollywood stars who come uh, to South Africa for their concerts and tours. So I can't wait for him to join me because I'm very excited to have him. I met him, um, actually to be honest, I met him in 2019 beginning and then this pandemic came and then it always get postponed, postponed, postponed. So I'm so happy that he's going to be with me today, tonight. Uh, just give me a second, I'm going to join him. So I'm excited for having him because I'm sure you guys are waiting for him as well. Because, yes, so it's connecting. Hi, Varshan. Hi, Dr. Somia. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. But thank you so much for joining me. You have no idea since the day I posted about you coming live with me. I'm just tired of giving answers to the people. Everybody's asking when it's happening, ma'am, when it's happening. People are eager to... Uh, waiting to see you because you know you are a South African known public figure. So I'm so, so happy that you're giving me your precious time. And I would like to say thank you to all the people who are going to join us live as well. Oh, thank you. I, I actually think you're lying about that because probably everybody's just been so excited about watching you again because I've been binge watching your videos, your Insta Live interviews with everybody else and I've been in, in really enjoying it. I think I must send you the screenshot. <laughs> then you will understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you so much. I was just giving a brief introduction about you to all of our viewers because my followers, in, I mean, it's not only from South Africa, it's from other part of the country as well. So I was telling that you are the main person behind the Bollywood stars who bring the Bollywood stars, who introduce the Bollywood stars in South Africa concerts. So, um, I mean, I must say that it's my honor to have you on Sharing Life Secrets with Soumya, the Instagram live series. So are you ready for the realistic questions I'm going to ask with you? I guess I am. Yes. Um, okay, Varshan. So just tell me something. Why you do what you do? Define life in your way. Thank you. I think we we have a bad connection. Hi. Hi, can you can you hear me now? Yeah, this is much better. Okay, cool. So my first question to you is Now I can. Why you do what you do? Define life in your way. I do what I do only because I love it. And because I'm passionate about it, uh, I'm not a stubborn person and I don't have an ego problem. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to doing things that I believe is right for me uh, and is right for the cause, uh, the part that I'm living in life, then I will do it. Uh, so if you ask me why I promote Bollywood on my radio shows, why I'm doing radio, uh, why I'm a spiritual person, I do it because it makes me feel good. And in most cases, the, the, the reception that you get, the response that you get from people that you do it for, I think the fact that you can use a platform to put a smile on their face is a reward to yourself. And that's why I keep doing it. So tell me, how did you start your career in this entertainment world? Like why you think about it like that this should be or going to be your career in future? It, uh, I was always crazy about Bollywood movies. Uh, and I wanted to do something, you know, whether it was to direct a movie uh, or, you know, just be a spot boy in a movie set or whatever else. So you know, I, I didn't really expect me to be reviewing movies because that's where it all started off. It started in 1996 when I joined a community radio station in Durban. Uh, and they gave me this platform to do a Bollywood review show. So, you know, it all started off from there. I think people liked me. So that lasted for four years. The community radio station eventually closed down. Uh, and then I hopped over to Lotus FM where I, st you know, kind of started doing the same thing. It was then the Bollywood Top 20 and, and reviews and everything else. Uh, so that's that's where this whole thing with Bollywood started off. Uh, it was um, 
I think I would I would jump onto anything that would give me a platform to get closer to Bollywood because I was you know a Bollywood crazy kid, and at that time being on radio was the closest that I could get. And little did I know that radio was going to help me reach greater heights. You know, so yeah. because I started to go to IFA Awards, actors were coming to South Africa and shooting movies or doing concerts. Were coming to us for interviews. I got to interview them face to face. um and eventually built a rapport with them you know it's like getting their mobile numbers and communicating with them and whatever else i think uh uh you know that 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 kind of advantage that i had through the job really made me stay in it and explore whatever opportunities were going to come my way i mean you love bollywood so much um and as you define yourself that you're crazy kid or crazy star for bollywood have you never thought like you must go to india and literally do something in bollywood to get the entry in bollywood in india because you know mumbai is such a huge platform where whole bollywood comes from so i studied television for making uh in 2001 2002 uh because at that time my direction in life was different i didn't know where exactly i was going to go and because as i said you're the bollywood crazy kid so i studied that thinking that i could make movies and whatever else um but i think you know i became a bit complacent because when i joined radio radio was demanding and everything yeah. else that came with it you know it took a lot of pressure uh, it took a lot of time and added a lot of pressure to my life so i i gave movies a break back then uh but i've been thinking about it and i was in meetings with with some people uh, last year and before the pandemic started as well you know for us to start start something now because netflix is so huge and amazon prime is so huge and the opportunities are greater uh so i don't know if if necessary to go go to bollywood the heart of of uh, of uh of um uh mumbai you know to kind of explore my dreams there to do something here that's bollywood inclined or whatever else but either way yes i will definitely do something like that Wow so I'm um, um, I can't wait to see you because um I'm from Mumbai you know that I I love I, know I that. love yeah. I love Bollywood as well <laughs> I, <laughs> You are Bollywood look at you <laughs> No 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 I just work hard so I love Bollywood but but I must salute you guys like I don't know how you do uh, shootings and you are so busy and you know because the thing is um i i remember when i was shooting in the film city in mumbai varshan you won't believe in 3 hours i got tired i literally got tired and then i told myself oh thank god i'm a doctor because really it's a <laughs> it's a hard work it's 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 not easy like what people see you on the television it's really mm-hmm. not easy and this is the reason why i started this live series because you know people inspire you people want to be like you but they really don't know how much hard work you do So so tell me something share something your game changer moment of your life like which literally changed your game I don't know if if anything like that happened I've had challenges along the way I don't think anything particularly was a game changer because I am not I don't like creating trends and I don't like following trends I just you know ride the wave and I'm as slow and steady as possible you know because uh very often I see people becoming uh overnight stars and they push too hard they want to steal your work they want to steal other people's work they just want to be out there all over the, uh, all over the place all over the time for me that's not a success formula because you could do it as much as you can but it will soon expire uh so you know in in that in that way um it's like when you say game changing i've had challenges uh in, yeah. in 2013 when i met an accident oh. and i saw my whole world starting to you know crash in front of me uh and uh i think i learned a lot about myself at that time and uh i realized because till that point uh everything was like you know games game playing and just enjoying yourselves and you know just uh you know making new friends here and then not not knowing who to trust and whatever else so i think that for me was like more an eye opener than a game changer uh and i uh, i've, I've hung on to spirituality ever since then so you know i've i've been very happy very peaceful ever since then uh well i must say one thing to you you know um i love colors channel personally not even uh, because it's coming in south africa but even in india i used to see the colors z and i see you on those channels i mean i must be very grateful and thankful to uh, shalendra ji who's running a colors uh, in south africa so i must say Whenever I see you on the TV, you know, um, you define me that 
you are authentic you are original what you are outside the television you are inside the television so i think that is very one a unique quality i noticed about you so Thank i must you. say and i'm also waiting for sharendra ji to meet sometime in my life and i fly to joburg because i must say personally thank you for bringing colors to south africa <laughs> yeah because that means and he's very watch- passionate he's very passionate about tv uh, and radio as well because he's also on radio uh and yeah. shalendra and i actually started our journey off together so you know we know each other very well and we kind of have the same direction in in this career path no but then i must uh, say thank you to you both because to be honest uh, i mean when i came to south africa i missed my home country i missed my indian channel so really when i i, I mean you won't believe uh, when i watch tv i only watch maybe colors or z because those are the channels i grew up with um so tell me something you know you know maybe you can deny it but you know that you are a public figure you know you are a influencer you know you are a radio host you are a producer you are a tv presenter i mean you're going to you you are a famous personality in south africa that is true so how do you feel about it how do you feel about being famous in this industry what positive benefits you can share with us see so me i'm not going to lie Uh, and i said this to someone just the other day because they asked me uh you know it's like don't you think you've been too long in this thing now and you know should should change to something else and i said no because when i joined i was as i said to you the passion bollywood kid the crazy bollywood kid but i was also very passionate for fame and uh let's say when i was 18 19 this is 1998 1999 fame was a very difficult thing to achieve you know it's something that you only yeah. watch big stars have yeah. and enjoy and whatever else uh and i so i you know that was kind of one of the other reasons that i joined the industry that i am in today so today to be on radio to have your voice playing on on ads on national radios uh yeah. and a voice of artists and to have your face appear on tv or whatever else i think that that for me is sort of an accomplishment although there's so much more that i need to do uh but it's a very good feeling uh but as i said to you earlier on as well is that you know um slow and steady that that's the way i i like to look at it so you wouldn't find me doing five things all at once i prefer yeah. to do one thing and give my heart completely to that now and maybe yeah. six months down the line try something else so tell me how long are you in uh, are you in this industry like since how long are you working uh, in this industry 20 24 this year will be 24 years actually 24 years oh my goodness yeah. that's the first that's, that's, that's that, the first time I'm, is that older than you <laughs> no <laughs> i mean that's the first see see washington to be honest um whenever i fly durban uh, you are busy i'm busy so i never got a chance to uh, to know you more and more but i follow you i i personally follow you everywhere on social media platform and wherever yeah. i can because uh, why uh, i must say one thing about you i'm not uh, praising you because you're in front of me but you know sometimes few people comes in your life and you can get that positive energy and positive vibes positive mm-hmm. feeling so when i met you for the first time i was not knowing i'm sorry to say because you know i'm new to south africa it's been only 7 years for me in this country now seven so years, yeah. um seven years I mean, in cape town <laughs> <laughs> not even in durban yeah, no. so you're in a beautiful I, place Uh, yes no doubt i i hope you guys can all move to cape town so you can shoot in such a beautiful city so uh, really when i met you when i came to know more about you you are that's what i i say always that you are an authentic human being which is very Thank rare you. thing to found in this world and that's what i was very impressed from you so i think you are one of those few people who i personally follow and i'm inspired by you, you. Thank Tell you so me much something for that. any time uh tell me something you know that uh, that this industry is about glitz and glamour like a lot of mm-hmm. our upcoming generation and youth wanted to be what you are today popular famous uh, celebrity public figure so but you also know that a lot of people also take shortcut route to reach to this point they don't do their education or they lacking something or they doing some wrong direction so what are your views and what guidance you because you are in this industry so what advice you would like to give the upcoming youth generation see i'm going to give them something that i didn't follow myself so uh, before you call me a hypocrite no i di- i didn't further my studies as to get a doctorate or, or this or that or whatever else not that i not that i don't believe in it uh but because i was too passionate about my hobby at that time so if there's any advice i could give them is to concentrate on the studies because i regret that now although yeah at any time i can go back and study something and further my studies in any way uh yeah. but 
don't don't ever jump onto the easy, on the the first bus that comes your way. Uh, yeah. Finish finish school properly. Study something. Uh, even if you think it's not, if it's not going to, you know, take you any further in life. If you feel right now for that moment, you need to study something, study something, because you don't know 20 years from now, that thing could actually come into play. Uh, like for, for me, for example, there was, a, there was a post that I was looking at uh, recently and it, it required a lot more. Actually, it required a degree um, yeah. in, in, uh, in filmmaking. And I don't have that because I dropped out halfway of it, you know, so had I, you know, had I furthered my studies back then, I think I really would have been in a more elaborate position. Uh, so uh, further your studies. Uh, don't make the mistake of jumping into your passion too early in life. Uh, but don't, uh, at the same time, uh, don't think that you're 18, 19, 20, whatever else, that you can be complacent because of the youth that you enjoy at that age. Start planning from a very uh, early time. Uh, and also, uh, I think... Uh, the best advice that I can give them is to follow the advice that's given to them by their parents or their seniors or their peers. It's very yeah. important because when we are that, when we are young, uh, let's say like 18 to even 25 or 26 or whatever else, we feel that whatever we think is right, whatever our elders say is wrong. Uh, and it comes back because I'm 40 now and I start to think to myself some of the are mistakes that I made already? in life. Don't lie. I, I'm 40 already. I I turned 40 in May this year. <laughs> okay, well, yes. well, age doesn't define yes. you, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but I'm happy with my age, actually. I'm, I'm proud to be 40. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, you know, when you, reach, when you reach 40, then you start to look back at those things that, you, uh, that were said by your seniors or peers back then, and you realize that you made mistakes in opposition to the advice that was given to you. Uh, so always follow the advice of people who have had experience before you. Wonderful. I think... Uh... I think because this is coming from you, so the people uh, who wanted to be in this industry or who, who see their dreams to pursue their career in this field, they will learn a lot because to take a right advice, to take a right step to enter into this industry, not take any shortcut route. Uh, tell me something, you know, uh, you're so popular, you're so famous. I'm sure that everybody uh, runs after you. you uh, they, there are so many people who want to be your friends. Oh, that doesn't Let's happen. put it into that way. Well, um, <laughs> that's what I have heard. So, <laughs> so um, and I have seen the Facebook as well. You get such a lovely comments. Lots of people place uh, you like shower all the love on you. So I think it's the biggest thing in life because for me, it's a very big thing in life. If your people loves you a lot in today's world. So uh, tell me something when you know that somebody is approaching you only to use you or use your connections for their benefit because you're popular, because you're powerful, because you're famous. How do you deal with these kind of people in your life? See, so that's one problem I really have been having repeatedly in my life. And that is why I say follow the advice of your peers or your seniors, because a lot of times, like, you know, uh, maybe your parents would warn you about some certain people because they have, you know, like the sixth sense that that person looks like a rogue or, you know, like uh, somebody who just wants to use you or whatever else. And I am very bad in that. I'm not embarrassed to say that I've, I've fallen many times because of the wrong people that I've trusted. Mm. Uh, so I can't even answer that question because uh, you... I think because I'm, I'm, I'm a very uh, a gentle person and yeah. I don't like debating things and I don't like fighting things. If, even if you've done something wrong to me on my face, I would just walk away and not talk to you. Perhaps, you know, I wouldn't confront you uh, violently. Uh, so I think that is, that is uh, something that I need to work on firstly before I give advice to anybody else. But the thing, uh, the thing that, that perhaps I, the message that I need to spread to, to, to everybody out there is that in this industry that we are in, it's, it's a very harsh world. Yeah. Uh, probably, uh, probably it would be appropriate to say that nobody can be your friend because when you take them to be your friend, that's when they start to use you. And that's when you start to fall, because if you're that humble and gentle soul, you feel like, okay, what did I do wrong? Instead of telling you, uh, accepting the fact that that person has done wrong, you've done nothing wrong. Yeah. You know, um, to all my special guests, I really love to ask this specific question because I myself is very emotional and sensitive girl. And in South Africa, I just entered to this industry, I think 2018 after I won the beauty pageant and then my life yeah, yeah. goes on and on and on. So uh, <laughs> because I am a very emotional person, I welcome people in my life. I trust them easily. 
So I think, uh, you know, and then I also fall back a lot because then I find out, oh, this person is doing this. You know, it's, it's hurtful. So then I'm learning more and more deep about it. So that's why I love to uh, ask this question to all my guests because you guys uh, teach me something in my life how to move on in this industry because it's quite tricky. Okay, so, so I, mean, I think the best thing, obviously, as I said, is not to trust anybody in this industry. Maybe some other industry, it would be different. But here, everybody is, as I said as well, I'm here for fame too. Uh, so everybody wants their share. They, they will get their share, but they'll want your share too. They want, they want to be in your lim limelight as well. Uh, so I, that's, that's my motto from now on is trust nobody. You know, Varshan, if I talk some, I know it's a show, you're my guest, but one thing I would like to share with you that uh, my mindset is very different. I feel that the person who's coming to me, I must make sure that they should get benefit from me so they can grow in their career. But I only love to help people who are genuine, who understand the importance of hard work and to reach to this point because it's not easy. Like that's what I always say, people, you watch us on the TV and shows, but you don't understand what we have been going through. So for me, that's yeah. very important. Personally, I'm very emotional. So I learned a lot now. So slowly, slowly, I'm changing myself. <laughs> I'm, I can say that. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. I'm glad so, you're learning. Yeah, but uh, tell me something. Um, how you see your future? What are your future plans? So now that I've reached 40, I see myself. Um, uh, I want to do that, that movie that I spoke to you about. Yeah. I'm, I'm really, uh, really keen and enthusiastic about that. And as I said to you, that we've been in talks already with some people. So now I want to do things uh, a little faster than I used to do over the past 20 years, because, you know, you can't be 50 and then start exploring life after that. So within this next 10 years, do something there. Uh, and uh, career wise, obviously that. Uh, and I think uh, I, I need to concentrate a little more on my personal life because everybody asks me that question. It's like, you're single and you're 40 and whatever else, you know? <laughs> so I've not been in a relationship for many, many years. Yeah. I think perhaps, you know, I'm, I'm open to, to whatever comes my way. I'm not going to go out and search for it or, or try shadi.com or anything like that. Maybe you love your career so much that you're passionate about it. So you're giving your life to it. And that's what it's impressive. That's what yeah, it's so. more unique. I guess, you know, you can say that you, uh, I'm married to my career because it, it, yeah. if you put all your hard work and dedication into your career, it never disappoints you. Absolutely. Very true. And um, tell me something, your uh, secrets of your successful life. So we all can learn and we all can be successful like you, like other people who are watching <laughs> you currently. Uh, I have got to say hi to Urmila. I think Urmila has been sending quite a few messages there from the time we started our conversation. And she sent to me as well yesterday that she's going to make sure she watches this video. Um, a secret of success. So, Mia, I think uh, humility, number one. Uh, and don't be vicious. There's opportunities for every, equal opportunities for everybody out there. Uh, don't don't think about, you know, hampering someone else's success or stealing from somebody else's share yeah. uh, for your own good. Uh, I always believe that, you know, even if I was targeting something, if I knew that something was meant for me and somebody went before me and, they, you know, they nabbed it or whatever else. Uh, and I'll say, okay, fine. Maybe that was meant for them. Maybe the universe is giving me something better. So I think I'm that type of person. I'm, I'm very calm, laid back. Uh, and uh, at the same time, it's, it's very disciplined. Uh, as if you, if, if you know that I, I woke up today at half past eight in the morning, I will wake up the same day, uh, same time every other day. And I'll go to bed the same time every night. You know, I'm that type of person. I close my laptop, wow. I shut off my phone at a certain time every night. Uh, so I think, you know, that discipline has been going on for many, many years. Uh, and I feel with that, you know, the fact that if you can respect yourself so much, yeah. uh, it can take you a longer way in life because you are not, you're not overworking yourself and you're not expecting too much from yourself. Yes, uh, that's a very beautiful thing you said. Uh, self-respect comes first before than anything in this life. And that's what I also follow. Like for self-respect, I can do anything. So uh, thank you for uh, saying that. And especially it's coming from you. So I, I'm sure it's going to be very more impactful towards all the people. Um, so tell me something you're planning for your movie uh, in upcoming time. Uh, do you think um, it will be only related to South African or South Africa? Or would you like to col uh, collaborate with the uh, Indian industry from Bollywood as well? I don't know if right now, if this film happens right now, uh, I don't know what's the 
process going to be like because we can't even travel and ideas are going to be changing and in terms of uh, how people watch movies is going to be changing rapidly over the next 5 or 6 months itself uh, a lot of people over the last 5 months during the pandemic have become so accustomed to watching things online mm. uh, and now the cinemas are back in business so we don't know how people's thinking is going to be how the audience wants to watch a movie you know are you comfortable staying at home and you know to continue watching your movies at home or do you want to go back to the big screen or whatever else So right now I'm I'm I think I'm at a total zero when it comes to thinking creatively in terms of that. Uh I wanted to observe what the audience is going to like uh, here in South Africa and there in India. Yeah. And obviously if you're going to make a film now you're going to have to make references to the COVID-19 pandemic which has been such a large influence since you know it's And I think people, it's a great hot topic. Change people. Yeah, yeah. So you know it's like right now I think it would be a stupid idea if you haven't already started writing a script, you know, from before the pandemic to just jump into something. uh because people's thinking is going to be changing uh but uh, i don't know if i would do something bollywood without having like 50 crores to spend on it <laughs> you know <laughs> if you want to do bollywood you must go really big because uh, what i notice is from our audience here uh is uh when they li- when they talk bollywood they think about the color they think about the lavish sets the costumes yeah. and whatever else you know so that costs a lot of money and there's a lot of coordination and artists and whatever else involved in that that kind of thing so I don't know if I would make something like that because I'm South African, uh Indian at heart. Uh so if I'm if I'm going to make my first film, I think it's going to have some sort of South African relevance, but maybe yeah. you know, uh directed towards the Indian community and then maybe explore the diaspora or something like that, you know, that kind of thing. Uh so right now no. I I'm at a complete zero when it comes to that. I wish you can um I don't know I can't comment on that it's your life but I wish you can uh, pick up some brand new people to give them opportunity to work in your movie who are not famous or who are not known shame at least they will get some career no, <laughs> no nepotism obviously <laughs> <laughs> exactly i mean i'm watching that as well i mean i can't believe it i, I feel so like anyway I, i can't even talk about it um anyway yeah. so so tell me who is your real competition I, this world is so competitive this world is so materialistic how you feel about it who is your real competition no well we're bound to compete with people because you know everybody wants a share as i was saying earlier on as well everybody wants a share of of something that's out there so you're going to compete uh for it uh if i have one person that i'm particularly competitive uh with i think that's hard to say because uh there really is nobody who inspires me i don't read biographies of people uh, but, uh i don't read uh, deepak chopra or anything like that because i i have my own thinking and yeah. whatever uh whatever discipline i follow whatever principles i follow comes from my from the vibration of my meditation or whatever else. so i follow my my own uh, teaching and thinking uh so it would be wrong for me to say i'm competing with anybody yeah i do admire some people uh, out there who have things that i feel that i i you know i would like to have as well uh but i would admire them and because i'm i'm a humble gentle soul i just it would just end there you know i'm not going to say okay i am going to go and get my share of that or i'm going to compete with this person so i prove to them you know that i'm better than them in some way or, or whatever else you speak um, to the wrong person about competition <laughs> no, I think uh I love one thing about it. Uh about just now I love one thing about you that you you know your qualities. Like you know that you say in yourself that you are a humble, you are a gentleman, you are a beautiful soul. So I think it's very important to know about ourselves before we go into the world and prove in front of the people. So that's what mm-hmm. I really love about you because really people are there who know their self quality how talented they are. So thank you for that. I mean it's it's really thank a you. wonderful um I don't know I, I don't know how to say but it's really a wonderful conversation. I'm really loving it. I don't know about <laughs> others you. but I'm learning a lot from you. So you literally well, training me that question. Bo- I thought you'd be bored because a lot of my friends my younger friends like you know when you start talking advice to them or preaching to them or whatever else and, and uh, they would like it at first and then they would say oh here comes daddy with some more advice <laughs> <laughs> No I mean yeah but I don't know but I I really love your thinking and I think um I don't know correct me if I'm wrong I think you are very highly successful today because of your thinking because of your mindset so that's why nobody can touch you and nobody can replace you am I right uh it's 
it's perhaps is a is a is passively competitive technique uh because you're just being yourself and you're just sitting back and letting everyone else run and tire themselves and get exhausted while you are just doing things at your own pace and coming forward i some uh, you know i'm uh, i'm uh, actually uh, relating myself with you a lot because i think i i share a, a similar thinking like you uh, okay, because uh, after, after after long time of meeting a person like really i can uh, relate my thinking with someone so thank you i'm, I'm you know varshan um I'm so happy today that I'm knowing you more and more. So I think that is a big happiness for me. Uh, tell me something. Um, you know, there is two kind of people in this world. One people mm. only do the things to get famous or their publicity stunt because I believe in actions rather than words. And so some people are there who who is doing. I, I can't give the example. Like there is so many things they're doing. This charity, they're doing this thing, they're doing this even just to show uh, that they are doing a lot for giving back to the community. But to be honest, they're only doing for their publicity to get their credit. And there is second kind of a people who genuine help people, who genuine go out of their home, make the time, put an effort to change the world. So, what are your views about these two kind of people in this today's world? See, I'm the second person, obviously. Uh, but if yes, you have to talk too that. much about that, then you, if you talk too much about it, then you're not humble anyway. So, uh, you know, let me uh, extract myself from the conversation and say that, Swamiya. Firstly, uh, I, I strongly believe that if you're doing charity, if you're doing noble work, and if you're doing good deeds for others, you don't need to put it out anyway. Nobody needs to see it. Uh, I do it too, but you'll never see a picture of it or, or anything else. Um, so. I, it's not fair to comment on it in, in in a negative light because they still are doing something to help somebody, you know. So uh, that's appreciated. That's good for you. But I really feel that you know sometimes when they do that uh, with the intention of getting publicity or whatever else, yeah, you know, then it, it's putting yourself out in the wrong way. Like I've seen a lot of pictures on social media during this pandemic of people going out and helping uh, communities and people particularly. Uh, I don't have a problem with that because, as I said, you know, they, they, that. community that person is benefiting from it which is a good thing but did you ever put yourself in in the place of that person that you're helping whose face has just been put out into and exposed to the rest of the world and i feel so bad because you're looking at a picture of somebody who has and a picture of person uh, who doesn't have anything and that poor person can't even comment uh, or 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 you know talk back for themselves or whatever else so i think you know we need to be a little more careful uh, about yeah. uh, what we put out there and we're doing it uh, to help people uh, with a good intention then great for you uh, try not to expose the people that you are uh, you, you are helping or try not to use them to further yourself exactly. in whatever uh, your whatever motive you have in life um i think this is one of the best answer i'm getting till now from all my series because the thing is personally i i, I want to share one experience with you um see um I do understand. I'm a human being, so I do understand everyone's emotions and feelings. But I'm sorry to say, uh, it's not about criticizing. It's not about appreciating. It's about the reality. The way pandemic hit the whole world, and what people are trying to do, I think they must think hundred times what they're doing it, because everything is temporary. Like, like Varshan. To be honest, if I talk about myself, I see so many patients every day. I'm only living on the basis of trust because I'm a very spiritual and God believer person. I don't even know what's going to happen next year to me. You understand mm-hmm. what I mean? So, yeah. and when I see the different kind of post on the social media about pandemic, pandemic, I feel like I my message to everyone is guys, if you want to really help someone, don't help because this is pandemic. Just help throughout your life. because this is pandemic is temporary i mean you might get famous or you might get publicity temporary but this not going to resolve the issue you should be available for each and every one throughout the whole time that's what i feel so that's why i don't allow any negativity or any emotional states or condition because i know i mean the people who understand they understand the people who who don't understand they don't understand because you know like you are from this industry and it's really hectic like you have to wake up you have to get ready you have to look good because you're a public figure you have to go to the radio station you have to do the tv presentation and everything so tell me how do you manage your this hectic schedule how do you keep yourself fit and fine so as i said to you it's a strict routine and discipline um for example if if 
uh, okay, I'm just giving you uh, this as an example. If if somebody says to me that um, they will call me at eight o'clock in the morning to discuss yeah. something that we discussed the day before, I will say to them, no, call me after half past eight because I will not wake up half an hour earlier. I, I, I usually wake up at about half past eight. So um, I will not wake up half an hour earlier to discuss it. You call me about nine o'clock or nine thirty or whatever else. And that I'm very strict about my discipline. I don't change anything for anybody else. Uh, so um, I, I guess you know that I would be giving away too many secrets if I say anything else. But uh, I'm strict to that, and uh, that that's helping me pay the bills, I guess. <laughs> so that's your secret of your fitness. Oh, sorry, you say fitness. I'm talking about in your general uh, routine life and your fitness, but that's amazing because being disciplined is the first step. So, actually, I must be like you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, no, I I heard you completely wrong. I thought you said something else. No, no, else. no, no, no. I, you I'm you are right. Disciplined. No, no, no. You are right. <laughs> no. I was asking about your routine and about your fitness. So you are right. Okay. I I have no fitness I have no fitness regime or routine or anything. I am not, you saw me the last time I was still fat. So <laughs> I am the last person to say anything about that. Uh but uh no I I I'm not the person to answer anything related to fitness. I was at the doctor's surgery uh, about a month back and he said you need to lose weight now. <laughs> and uh you know <laughs> a lot of the 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 pain and the pressure that you're getting in your body could be related to that so i think i need to get some advice from you being the doctor and from other people like you on how to be fit <laughs> well uh, you know i always tell patients please lose weight please lose weight so i think i'm the wrong person to ask because i will just say <laughs> please lose weight <laughs> so that's the thing uh, so tell me I use uh, I use such a big Bollywood fan like since your childhood who's your uh, favorite Bollywood stars who uh, who you see in your life as your inspiration or your role model No role models definitely in Bollywood and especially not now I think it would be so wrong to pick out a role model now because uh it was always um like Hema Malini from back then Waheeda Rehman type Sri Devi on to now Deepika Padukone but I'm very disappointed with Deepika Padukon recently because she's make, been making some statements about mental health and things like that which I I don't agree on you know it's just it seems like a paid campaign uh so I I don't want to say role model but I love her I think she's very elegant uh and the way she portrays herself on screen and off screen or whatever else has a sense of dignity which is uh which was uh, highly pre- present in Hema Malini's uh um uh portrayal you know real life of screen portrayal back then so I I yeah. do find both you know to be dream dream girls um so i i love and admire those type of women and it it they must have you know a sense of grace um dignity and intellect all at the same time yeah and tell me if you compare like today's uh, bollywood time today's bollywood era and the previous bollywood time like we call it in in old zamana and new zamana old time and new time uh what differences you see uh and which which time you like more in terms of movies over like the way they creating the movies nowadays definitely not the current times i don't like the current times at all and i'm not even referring to now i'm referring to pre pandemic like say from 20 2016 down to 2020 uh i didn't i was not happy at all with the movies and the music that we were getting yeah, a lot of the movies were different they were picking on a different formula or whatever else uh which was good it was nice to know that they were being creative and whatever <laughs> else uh but ultimately it was moving away from what the mm-hmm. Indian cinema was meant to be and it became very very disappointing to me you know it's like uh i was losing my passion towards the industry because even the music now that we were getting was was very bad uh i mean you know having hosted the top 20 until the the pandemic started and we we didn't have enough songs to put on the top 20 because everything was either a trashy remix or something that was new but doesn't really appeal to the audience So we can go back to you know 19th I've been watching films from late 1950 and um, movies that were released late 1950s 60s 70s or whatever else uh and that that was the magical time I mean you could really just sit back and allow this movie to to encapsulate you uh to hypnotize you take you to another world and you enjoy uh and uh I think you know that that era really is missing in in Bollywood today that really we really need to return to that era I agree with you. I also feel same because I think uh, we are getting good movies, but 
they are not like with full of meanings you know like in previous mm-hmm. time you used to get such a beautiful story which changed your life it inspired you so i also miss that touch in bollywood no doubt i mean you won't believe uh, when i was shooting with zeena tamanji in film city india i even told uh, zeena ji i really miss your time of movies <laughs> because our time movies are really it can't touch to your level yeah. so you are yeah definitely right. not yeah so tell me something um if you would like to change one thing in this world what it would be and why so you know i was uh, as i said to you at the start i was binge watching your videos uh the interviews that you did with everybody were beat sorry show denver which you did the other day and i i i resonated with denver's response uh yeah. because i feel very strongly about that so i'm i'm actually going to quote him here and and copy what he said uh i uh, i think you know to change the way men think about women or perhaps change the way men think about themselves about you know the way we think about ourselves and the way we think about women and treat women i think that's very important because we might think that we're living in modern times and things like gender based violence and whatever else is or uh, gender inequality at the workplace is is taboo but it's i think it's more prevalent now than it was before uh and i think uh, you know uh, i think we need to change that speaking from a male perspective men need to change the way we treat and respect women wow i must salute you because that's coming from you guys so if you guys have this kind of thinking definitely the world going to change soon and i must say that i'm very blessed that uh, like people like margaret surisha then were you yourself you guys are giving me time because each and every words what you spreading right now uh, it really changing a lot of mindset you won't believe um like i i i have to share this live because what happened when i started my ig series my intention was to bring out the best and let common people know who want to see you who want to meet you who want to have a picture with you that how you live and what they can do for living their best life so slowly 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 you won't believe every day i'm i'm really saying like when i posted your picture uh, on my status on my social media varshan you won't believe it people dm me people message me on messenger ma'am you're not changing the time ma'am varshan sir will be coming ma'am it will this happen i'm like yes yes so so you know what i love about all the fans that they follow yeah. you because they love you yeah. and they want to be yeah. like you so it's very yeah. good thing that whatever you saying it going to create a very impact powerful way um, to change their mind so i really appreciate it uh, tell me something uh, where uh, i mean i'm following you everywhere but the people who are currently watching you live from everywhere from all over the different part of the country where they can follow you on the social media platform and to know about you to listen about your more radios any link any social media you have profile please share with us i'm all over you can find me uh, varshan bhaijan sukan on facebook uh and it's uh, i am underscore varshan on instagram uh on twitter at i am varshan sukan and uh i'm on linkedin as well i'm on lotus fm uh monday to friday it's the lunchtime show and saturday uh in the afternoon is the bollywood top 20 which is now just a billboard show uh you know we 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 sing away from the top 20 format for a while because we don't have new content uh so it's it's you know we're doing tribute shows at the moment you know to bollywood stars and legends and whatever else so that's where you can hear me and that's where you can follow me and if uh, let's say you know lotus fm is so famous in south africa so famous when i came to south africa first time my husband told me the first radio station i heard in south africa was lotus <laughs> believe me so tell me uh, when good. you <laughs> so tell me one thing when you do your uh, radio uh, shows on your lotus related to your bollywood uh, songs can people can approach you to request you with song they love so you can play it for them do you do something like that yeah we do that on the weekday show which is the lunch lunch time show uh so that we do song requests and we have a jukebox and and things like that uh so we you know always interacting always open to listener suggestions and feedback and whatever else Okay great thank you so much Varshan um I'm not sure about others but you really changed my life in a lot of ways so I must say that uh, it's the first time I'm meeting you so closely and it's my honor yeah, to see you is. 
uh, in such a nice way. So I can't wait for this pandemic to get over. So definitely I have to fly Durban, not for any shows, but I Absolutely, have to yeah. meet you now. I think I have to meet you. <laughs> so thank you. I'm looking forward to that so as well. Yeah, thank you. Yes, you can I, I just know, say hi I as well to Fatima? Can I say yes, hi to Fatima can, Eunice as well, who's been sending us all these messages to and to everybody else? To everybody else who's, who've been sending these messages, we really appreciate it. I don't know if you read one message or not. Uh, it, it's quite long time ago. Someone sent me a uh, Varshan, Varshan sir. Uh, Varshan sir, I also want to be your friend. Shaman, please Varshan, give some message for your fans and for your people who are watching you live. Yeah, so to all, all of my, all my friends, all my uh, fans, I, I don't like to call them fans, all my friends, friends. Uh, and the yes. people who support and love me, I really appreciate it. And thank you all for watching this uh, interview. I hope you enjoyed it. Yes, and please, it's a promise that when I'm coming to Durban, you have to give me five minutes of your busy uh, life so I can meet you then. You'll have more than five minutes. I look forward to it. <laughs> but thank you so much for uh, joining me and for giving your precious you. uh, time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Washington. Thank you, Tomia. You take care. You too. Keep well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.